In this video, we are going to discuss basic number properties. We'll be discussing the basic number properties that you can see here. All these formulas have been provided to you in your formula sheet as well. I'll be going through these fairly quickly, as this should be a refresher for most of you. However, if there's any rule that you are uncertain about, it's really important that you resolve it. And these are foundational concepts that you really need to have dialed in. There will be links to other videos that you can reference for more information. And of course, you can always, always ask me. The first rule we're going to go over is the commutative property of addition. The commutative property basically implies that the order does not matter. So when we have a plus b, it's equal to b plus a. For a numeric example of this, imagine 6 plus 3, which gives us 9. It's also equal to 3 plus 6, which also gives us 9. The order doesn't matter. Next, we have the commutative property of multiplication, listed in two different forms here. Once again, the commutative property here implies that order doesn't matter. So whether we have a, b, a times b, it's the same as b times a. Or we could have a times b times c is the same as b times c times a is equal to c times b times a, or, or any variation of it. As a numeric example, imagine 3 times 5 times 10. If we were to do this in order, we'd have 3 times 5 is 15, times 10, we would get 150. Now this is the same as if we were to do 5 times 10 times 3. We would have 50 times 3, and we would still get 150. So ultimately, the order of multiplication does not matter. Next, we have the associative property of addition where we have in brackets a plus b plus c is equal to a plus in brackets b plus c. This rule implies that when within our bracketed term we have addition or subtraction and outside the bracketed term we have addition or subtraction that the order doesn't matter. For instance, if we had something like 3 plus 5 in brackets plus 10 we would get 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 10, 18. Now let's try doing this a little bit differently. We'd have 3 plus, in brackets, 5 plus 10. So we'd move those brackets so that we change the sequence in which we do our calculations. And in the brackets, that addition becomes 15. 3 plus 15 is still equal to 18. So as long as it's addition or subtraction, um, going on within the brackets and outside the brackets. Essentially, the brackets don't matter and the commutative property applies and the order of addition doesn't matter. Now be mindful because there's a big difference when we have addition within the brackets and something else like multiplication going on outside the brackets. In this case, within the brackets we would get 3 plus 5 which is 8 times 10, giving us 80. Now, if we were to remove those brackets and put them somewhere else, then we would get 3 plus 5 times 10. In this case, we would do the bracketed portion first, which is 5 times 10, 50, plus 3, we would get 53. So this would lead to a very different result, and the associative property would not apply. The associative property will only apply when we have addition or subtraction with the brackets and addition or subtraction outside the brackets. Next, we have the associative property of multiplication. For this rule, once again, we have in brackets a b times c is equal to a times b times c in brackets. Once again, this is saying that the order does not matter. What we do first in brackets does not matter because what we've got here is multiplication within the brackets and multiplication outside the brackets. And from the commutative property of multiplication, we know that the order of multiplication doesn't matter. Um, but just to nail this point, um, let's use some numbers to illustrate this. Imagine we had 4 times 5 times 2, that would give me 4 times 5 is 20, times 2 would give me 40. Now I would get the same result 
if I did 4 times in brackets 5 times 2, so here I would have 10, 4 times 10 would give me 40. So I get the same results. And just like um, in our previous example, we have to be mindful that the operation is the same within the brackets and outside the brackets, either multiplication or division in this case. So this would not work if we had 4 times 5 plus 2. This would give me 20 in the brackets plus 2, 22, versus 4 times 5 plus 2 in brackets. I would have 7 times 4. That would give me 28. This would not work because we have multiplication within the brackets and addition outside the brackets. So that associated property would not apply. We have to be mindful of what the order of operations defined by the brackets is telling us to do. Next, we have the distributive property of multiplication. So this is when we have different operations happening within the brackets, addition or subtraction going on within the brackets, and multiplication happening next to the brackets. The, now what, how we would do this is we would have to distribute the multiplication into the terms within the brackets. So I would distribute to the first term A times B, then I would leave the plus sign, and then I would distribute to the next term. A times C. For a numeric example of this, let's look at 3 times 8 plus 2. Now we know that 8 plus 2 is 10, so 3 times 8 plus 2, or 3 times 10 should give me 30. But let's try it with a distributive property, so I could alternatively have 3 times 8 giving me 3 times 8 plus 3 times 2, this gives me 24 plus 6, this is also equal to 30. So this rule applies. Next we have the identity property of addition. This is saying that if I add 0 to any number a in this instance, I will still have a. For a numeric example, let's say 3 plus 0, well, I've added nothing to it. I'm still left with 3. And algebraic, this would work with x, y squared plus 0. I would still have x, y squared. Next, I have the identity property of multiplication. So this is saying that if I have a number a times 1, I'm still going to have a at the end. I have one unit of a. So for instance, if I were to take that 3 times 1 this time, I'd still be left with 3. Uh, another one that's worth looking at is x times 1. I would still have x. This one my students often forget when we're trying to collect like terms and we have just an x. Remember that when we have a lone x, it's really just one x. Next, we have the inverse property of addition. This is saying that if we have a term and we add its negative value, we're going to end up with 0. So for instance, if I have 33 plus the negative of that value, negative 33, I'm going to end up with 0. So something like xy, if I were to add negative xy, I would have 0 at the end. The last of these basic number properties is the inverse property of multiplication. This is saying that if I were to have any term a and I multiplied by the inverse of it, I would be left with 1. So for instance, if I had 2, and I multiplied by half, half of 2 would leave me with 1. Similarly, if I were to have x and I multiplied by 1 over x, I'd be left with 1. Now let's remember that multiplying fractions, I this is really the same as saying x over x, and this is why we are cancel them out often and leave it as 1. Now there is a caveat to this rule and that is that a cannot be equal to 0 because 
it is impossible to divide by zero. That number does not exist. So this rule will apply as long as a does not equal to zero. So these basic number properties so far have been presented through the lens of addition and multiplication. But what about subtraction and division? Well, these rules apply for subtraction and division as well. For subtraction, the idea is that it is related to addition. If we have a minus b, it's really the same as saying a plus negative b. As a numeric example, we could have 5 minus 2 is really equal to 5 plus negative 2. Once we recognize that subtracting a value is really the equivalent of adding the negative of that value, all the addition rules apply. So for instance, 5 minus 2 is really the same as 5 plus negative 2. So then we could rearrange it according to the commutative rule as negative 2 plus 5 because order doesn't matter. Another example, we might have something like 5 minus 2 plus 3. Well, once we consider this as 5 plus negative 2, all in brackets, plus 3, this is the same as writing 5 plus negative 2 plus 3. So the commutative and associative properties of addition apply to subtraction. Similarly, if we were to have negative a plus 0, we would get negative a. Thus, the identity property applies to a negative value. Similarly, the inverse property would apply if we had a negative a to begin with. So if we had negative 1, the inverse property would imply that the opposite of a negative value, the negative of the negative is a positive value. So negative 1 plus positive 1 would give us 0. Thus, all of these addition properties apply for subtraction or for negative values as well. Similarly, for division, all of the rules of multiplication apply. Now for division, where I would have a divided by b, I'm going to consider this as a times 1 over b. Let's use a numeric example to help nail this point. If I were to have 10 divided by 2, this would be the same as saying 10 times half. So examining this in terms of the commutative property, I could have 10 divided by 2 is equal to 10 times half, which is also equal to half times 10. For the associative rule, I might have something like 10 divided by 2 times 4. I know that this is equal to 10 times half times 4. And once I write this out, the, I can start to think of this in terms of the associative property. And it's the same as 10 times half of 4. Now let's see how this works with the identity property. This one we would be looking at the inverse of a. 1 over a times 1, I'm still left with 1 over a. For the inverse property of multiplication, let's imagine we had the inverse first. So let's say I had something like half to begin with. Well, if I multiply by the inverse of this, it's really the reciprocal, it would be 2. And I would be left with half times 2, 1. So the inverse property of multiplication and the identity property of multiplication also apply to the inverse of A. That concludes the basic number properties. Next up, we have the properties of negative numbers.